From the Caribbean to canals, catamarans to Costa Rica, we do it all. This is a story about the wide array of services our yacht brokerage can provide when a client hires us as their buyer's agent. I'm Ray Ellis with Marina Del Rey Yacht Sales. We are in Los Angeles area of California, Marina Del Rey. In this particular adventure, we circle through Florida, the French West Indies, the Caribbean Sea, the Panama Canal, and Central America, even a brief stay in distant outreach of the Netherlands. We are successful in locating, purchasing, and delivering that special boat for my client. There were many reasons why the client wanted to purchase a Lagoon 630 powered catamaran. It's especially wide, 35 feet wide. It's 63 feet long. With port and starboard dual helm steering stations towards the stern, a captain has complete view of the upper salon and deck guests. The inside main salon is more open due to the galley's location on a lower level. The client, who had missed out on a previous offering, asked me to find one. He doesn't care where it is. My extensive search for Lagoon 630 reveals only a few, and of those, only one that can be driven to my client's home destination. It's a 2016 on the far eastern edge of the Caribbean Sea, in the French West Indies, on the volcanic island of Martinique, part of France. The asking price in euros equates to 1.9 million US dollars. My client's instructions are, buy it. In my role as purchasing agent representing the buyer, I will be responsible for the survey and sea trial, changing the vessel's ownership and registration from France to the United States, and more. And I am the project manager responsible for outfitting the vessel, overseeing repairs, and purchasing accessories. I will be hiring captain and crew for the vessel's delivery across the Caribbean, through the Panama Canal, and into the Pacific Ocean, and northward to its destination in Costa Rica. My plans include two trips, the first of which begins on April 5th, 2022. Taking an overnight flight from LAX to Miami, I arrive in the morning of the 6th, join a friend for breakfast, then board a flight from Miami to the island of St. Martin. St. Martin in the French West Indies has been partitioned since 1648. I land at Princess Juliana International Airport in St. Martin, the island's southern portion, part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. I stay overnight in a nearby hotel. The next morning, I take a shuttle bus to the collectivity of St. Martin, the island's northern half, part of the French Republic. There, the seller's broker joins me on a plane to Martinique, where the Lagoon 630 is harbored. Our flight departs from the island's other airport, La Sperance Airport, SFG, and stops briefly on the French island of Guadeloupe, then lands in Martinique. Another vessel not far from the Lagoon 630 will serve as my lodging while I'm there. On the agenda for April 7 is the Lagoon 630's haul-out, survey, sea trial, some repairs, and a shopping spree. One may even say a whopping spree of marine parts, jet skis, scuba gear, snorkel gear, waterways, towing rings, and a barbecue. I hire a Martinique local named Luke to drive me around. Fortunately for me, Luke is great. He speaks English and French, which is of enormous value helping me negotiate our list of purchases. It was a very busy day. Things move quickly and by the April 9th, I'm able to return to St. Martin ahead of schedule with plans to return to Miami, only to discover that there are no seats available on departing planes for several days. After a two-day layover and the 11th hour COVID test, I eventually stepped foot back in Los Angeles on April 12th. During the next six weeks back in Los Angeles, I'm involved with transferring the vessel's ownership from France to the USA, coordinating with the client's team the insurance coverage for the vessel's transit from the Caribbean to Costa Rica. We established the travel itinerary, including reservations in the various marinas along the way, and at the marina where the boat is going to be at, at the very end. At each of those stops, we need to be prepared with insurance papers, documentation papers, passports for everyone on the boat, all of which is quite a logistical nightmare, actually. I hire French Captain Francois, who speaks Spanish in addition to English and French, which turns out to be a real benefit traveling through the Panama Canal. The arrangement also includes Francois' 
wife, Samantha, who is also a captain, Captain Sam. The client's Costa Rican crew, a captain, first mate, chef, and assistant will be joining the husband and wife team. Once the vessel reaches Panama, we will be hiring a canal pilot and an additional crew of four line handlers. Pilots and line handlers are required for the canal passage. A second canal pilot will board us for the second part of the canal. We are required to provide food and water for the canal pilots. We are confident that they will be eating well. As the sale and registration are completed in Los Angeles, Captain Francois, Samantha, and the Costa Rican crew gather in Martinique. They board my client's newly purchased Lagoon 630 power catamaran and begin their westward trek across the Caribbean Sea. For the next five days, the vessel travels continuously on a 24-hour schedule with alternating four-hour shifts. At the end of five days, the vessel and crew arrive at Limon Bay on the Panama Canal's Atlantic side. There they join an enormous flotilla of worldwide shipping and cruising vessels, all awaiting passage. And it is there that I will be joining the party, docked at Shelter Bay Marina. My second of two trips begins late in the evening of June 2nd with a flight from Los Angeles to Panama City. From Panama City, I travel by a hired driver to the canal's opening to board the vessel. I arrive on what turns out to be day two of a four day wait for our canal passage slot. We are told that these waits can be as long as 21 days. We are very lucky. Once our slot is awarded, our pilot and crew of line handlers join us. We rent 12 sets of tire fenders and lots of line. We sign the paperwork and pay our tolls. We then go on a staging area where it turns out to be another four hour wait before we enter the Gatun Locks. Now a quick primer. Container vessels, cruise ships, aircraft carriers, even Lagoon 630s Travel in between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans can avoid a lengthy trip around the southern tip of South America, thanks to the Panama Canal. Half of the canal's 51-mile route, which crosses the Isthmus of Panama, isn't even a canal. It's a passage across Gatun Lake, which makes it easy, except that the lake is 85 feet above sea level. So the system of canal locks acts as an escalator raising the vessels to a total of 85 feet so they can travel across the lake on one end, then de-escalate the vessels back to sea level at the other end. Container vessels, cruise ships, aircraft carriers, and most importantly, Lagoon 630s are expeditiously dispatched into the slightly different oceans they've chosen to continue their trip. Most of the space inside our canal lock is occupied by a huge container vessel. Smaller recreational vessels such as ours are awarded the leftover space. So we are in the lock just behind a huge container ship. And surprise, two smaller vessels are strapped to the side of our power catamaran. Don't ask us, it's just how they do it. 11 boats of the Clipper Round the World Yacht Race also had traveled through the canal just a few days earlier. We spent the day passing through the Gaton Locks, then cruising across Gaton Lake. Late that evening, our first canal pilot departs. We spend the evening on the vessel, docked on a mooring in the lake. The following morning, our new canal pilot joins us for the remaining passage. Still at 85 feet above sea level, we proceed from the lake into the canal portion into the Pedro Miguel locks, descending back to sea level through the Miraflores locks. We return our rented lines and tires and say goodbyes to our second pilot and the line handler crew. Additional paperwork is now required before leaving Panama Canal, including an overnight stay on Gatun Lake, the entire passage from start to finish has taken two days. Readying ourselves for the journey northward along the Pacific coast, we spend a night in Panama City, docked in Fuerte Amador Marina. We stock up on water, provisions, and for a mere 3,600 US dollars, a full tank of fuel. We also purchased the one remaining item from the Martinique shopping list, a barbecue. After passing through the canal, the original plan was for me to fly back to the U.S. However, by popular demand, they insist that I stay and ride with them to Costa Rica, which is no disappointment for me. With the vessel operating continuously, the trip to Costa Rica takes three additional days. Our four captains alternate shifts, driving the boat for four hours while someone else is available on standby if needed. There have been many rainstorms in Costa Rica just prior to our arrival, so we have to stay on watch for floating logs and debris in the ocean. We go through several rain and thunderstorms ourselves, including some rough seas at one point. 
Along the way, we throw out our fishing line and twice catch some really nice tuna, which we cut up to enjoy fresh sashimi right on the boat. We arrive in Cuepos, Costa Rica, the final destination a few hours early, so we have to wait for customs to arrive and clear us into the country. One of my jobs is to make sure that we have all the documentation, insurance paperwork, and passports for everyone aboard the vessel. Then, Captain Francois meets with the customs agent, they go over all of the documents, and the agent declares us acceptable to enter the country. We step off the boat and onto Costa Rican shore. The vessel is moved to a slip they had assigned to us temporarily until the permanent slip becomes available. Costa Rica is a very beautiful country. If you love nature and the outdoors, it's the perfect place for that. Cuepos holds several major billfish and tuna fishing tournaments every year. It is known for its fantastic fishing. Sadly, the adventure is coming to a close. In a small plane, I fly to San Jose Mineta International Airport in Costa Rica. From there, a United Airlines flight brings me to LAX. It is 5 a.m. June 10th, eight days after leaving for Panama City. We are willing to go to great lengths for our clients, but for this project, we keep our hemispheres local. A little about me. In 1985, I bought my first boat from local broker Steve Curran. During the next three decades, I invest myself in the boating life. I've made over 150 trips to Catalina. I serve regularly as a local sail race crew on Team Rascal. I've been a sailing instructor. I've worked countless boat shows for the local broker Steve Curran, and I've also earned my 100 ton captain's license. When not busy with all of the above, my dedication to the boating lifestyle continued 24 seven as a Marina Del Rey liveaboard for 30 years. But there was one thing missing. So in 2022, I decided to sell boats professionally. Contacting local broker Steve Curran, he was happy to sponsor me. After receiving my license, I was involved in the sale of 10 boats my first year. 13 years ago, I gave sailing lessons to a student. Little did I know that student would be the client who contacts me asking to find a Lagoon 630. It was to be my third sale. 